One of the things that I really love about The Crucible is that um, while it is considered a fictional play, it's based on real historical events. Um, the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 really did take place in Massachusetts. Um, you can still visit Salem. You can see where these people are buried. Um, they all really did exist. The only downside to it is that it makes for a huge cast. Um, the play is about an event that happened to an entire town, so everybody who lived in the town is now a member of the cast. So there's a lot of names to remember. So before we get into the story, um, I just wanted to take a minute in this video to talk about who the characters are, kind of how they were connected, um, just to help you kind of remember some of these names, because there's a lot of people to keep track of in this play. All right. So we're going to start down here um, with Reverend Paris. He was the minister of Salem, and the events of the witch trials started in his house. Okay, he has a slave named Tituba, who's from Barbados. And Tituba's job was to take care of two young girls who lived with Reverend Paris. Um, his niece, Abigail, who in the play is about 17. She's an orphan. Her parents were killed, so she lives with her uncle. And then his daughter, Betty Paris, who is, I think she's supposed to be like 11 or 12, somewhere around there. So they're cousins. Um, and Tituba takes care of them. So during the winter of 1692, the way this starts... Um, if you've ever been to Massachusetts in winter, you know, it's pretty miserable. So Tichiba would, you know, tell the girls stories, you know, they're stuck inside in the snow. She'd tell them stories about growing up in Barbados and, you know, kind of do fun little magic tricks for them, things like that. Um, and then of course, just like today, the girls start inviting their friends to come over and hear Tichiba's stories and, you know, hang out. So that's how the circle of girls, and that's what they call them in the play, the circle of girls, starts to grow is, you know, these girls that Abigail and Betty are friends with, they invite them to come over and eventually it kind of gets out of control and it, it leads to the witch accusations. So you'll notice on the map here, anybody whose name is bold and italicized, those are girls who are in the circle, right? They, they are invited by Abigail and Betty into the circle. It's not all of them, but they're the key names that you're going to need to know in the play. Um, the next girl in the circle that we're going to talk about up towards the top is Mary Warren. And Mary Warren and Abigail, I don't know if that's how you actually spell the word frenemies, but just go with me. Um, Mary Warren and Abigail are the definition of frenemies. They don't like each other. Um, Abigail bullies Mary Warren quite badly. Mary Warren's kind of terrified of Abigail. Um, but they hang out together because they're friends with all the same people. You know, it, it's this group of girls that they're all together. Um, and you guys know people like this, that you may not actually like each other, but just whatever, we're friends with the same people, so we'll put up with each other. That's Mary Warren and Abigail Williams. They don't get along. They're not good friends, but, you know, they're friends with the same people, so whatever. Um, one of the reasons there's some tension between them is Mary Warren is the maid to John and Elizabeth Proctor. And John and Elizabeth Proctor are farmers. They're a landowning family. Um, Mary Warren works for them. Abigail used to be their maid, and then she got fired. And so there's some tension there. But, and then Mary Warren took the job, so there's some tension between her and Abigail about that. Um, there's also some tension between Abigail and Elizabeth Proctor, who's the, the wife and the mother of the family. Um, Elizabeth is the one who actually fired Abigail, so obviously there's some bad feelings there. There's also some tension between Abigail and John Proctor, which you'll find out more about in Act 1. Okay, so that's the Proctor family. Their neighbors are the Corey family, over to the left. Giles Corey is another farmer, another landowner, and his name is pronounced Giles. Students always want to call it Giles, but his name is Giles, okay? Um, he's another landowner, and he and John are best buddies. They help each other, you know, they work in the fields together, they're cutting firewood together, they, they just get along really well. Um, also, the two wives, Elizabeth and Martha Corey, um, they're very good friends as well, you know, kind of keep each other company. So these two families are very close. All right, now, moving down along the map, um, one family that the Corys are not close with, they do not enjoy, is the Putnam family. They're neighbors, um, but they do not get along at all. Giles Corey hates Thomas Putnam. The feeling's mutual, too, but but there's so much hate between these two families. They can't stand each other. Um, you'll notice there's a lot of, like, drama between the people in this town. There's a lot of people who don't get along with each other very well. Um, the Putnam family also have two other neighbors. Um, Francis and Rebecca Nurse, and then George Jacobs. So looking over at the Nurse's family, um, 
neighbors to the Putnams. Thomas Putnam, I should say, is another landowner, um, but he's wealthier, one of the wealthier landowners. He was, you know, there's, of course, different kind of social and economic classes in the town. He's got a little bit more money than some of the other Farmies family, so he's up there. Um, his wife, Ann Putnam, absolutely hates her neighbor, Rebecca Nurse. Um, cannot stand her. And I don't want to talk about that too much because you'll find out why in the first act, but um, there's a lot of a lot of bad blood between her and Rebecca Nurse. Now the Nurse family, Francis Nurse is another landowner, very wealthy, um, about the same status as the Putnams. They they both have quite a lot of money. Rebecca Nurse, his wife, is probably the nicest character in the whole play. She's just, and, and the real Rebecca Nurse was supposedly just like her. Um, she's this wonderful older woman. She's very well respected in the town. Um, she ran a lot of charities in both Salem and Boston, trying to help the poor, um, you know, gathering food and clothing and things like that, medical supplies. She was a midwife, so she helped women, um, through their pregnancies and their deliveries. Um, she's just like this wonderful grandma figure that everybody loves. I mean, she was just a fabulous person, um, except Ann Putnam hates her. That's the only person who doesn't like Rebecca Nurse is Ann Putnam. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now. The Putnam's final neighbor is George Jacobs, also a neighbor to the nurses. George Jacobs is another landowner, older man, very, very super duper wealthy. Um, I think if I remember correctly, his farm was like 6,000 acres or some, you know, crazy amount. Uh, he just, he had a lot of land, very wealthy guy in the town. Now, back in the Putnam's house, the Putnam's do kind of circle us back to our original family, um, Reverend Paris, okay? The daughter, Anne Ruth is her nickname. Ruth Putnam is best friends with Betty. Ruth and Betty are both about the same age, you know, around 10, 11, 12, that age range. Um, they're best friends. And then the Putnam's maid, Mercy Lewis, is best friends with Abigail. So that's kind of how our whole circle comes back together. All the families are connected in the town. Now, those are the people who are in the actual town. When the witch trials really start, other people are brought into the town to conduct the trials and conduct investigations. And those are the, that's the names down in the bottom right corner. So I want to talk through those real quick. All right. The first person who gets brought to the town is Reverend John Hale. And Reverend John Hale is our professional witch hunter. That's his job. Um, he goes around, you know, he, he hears rumors of a witch and he goes around and he tests the person basically to see if they really are a witch or not. Um, he conducts those investigations, you know, looking for a witch's mark, um, you know, seeing if they, all those, all those kind of weird tests that they came up with to check for witchcraft. Um, that's what he'd look into. And he was considered, and he wasn't the only one. There were a lot of professional witch hunters that this was their job. They would go around and look for, um, you know, to give evidence. Yes, this person is or is not a witch. So he's brought in to start investigating once the girls start making accusations. Then, of course, you have the court, four judges, Judge Danforth, Judge Hawthorne, Judge Corwin, and Judge Sewell. And they're brought in um, once the accusations start to conduct the trial. The final name you need to know is Ezekiel Cheever, and he is the jailer. So when people start getting arrested, start getting convicted, it's his job to take them off to jail. All right. So that's our cast. Lots of names. Um, feel free to save this video or take a screenshot, you know, if you just need to kind of check through it as you're working through the play. Um, I know there's a lot of names and, and if you're going to be able to watch the film, a lot of faces to keep track of. Um, but this really is a fascinating story. It's kind of a frightening, you know, upsetting story, but it's a really interesting story of what happened to this town. Um, and I hope you all end up enjoying it as much as I do. Thanks. Bye.